So, you know, this is the cornerstone of old classic technical analysis. These are patterns that are seen everywhere on the charts. And, you know, they almost become like what they call, they're like self-fulfilling prophecies because so many traders know them and are trained and learn to trade based on them that then everyone anticipates them and that, uh, that is how price behaves because people, you know, the markets move because trading decisions made by people. I mean, even if it's algorithmic trading, which accounts for a majority of the trading volume every day on the markets, those algorithms are still programmed by human traders that are taught all these patterns and all these ways that price moves. So you definitely want to know how all these things happen. Okay, so classical chart patterns can be divided in three categories, reversals, continuations, and neutral. We're going to look at them in four videos. Uh, because the continuation patterns, there's more of them, so I'm going to split it in two. So we're going to have four videos going over all of them. We're going to look at some theory, some slides, and then I'm going to show you in the charts how to identify them and how you're going to approach them when you do your trading for them. So without further ado, let's dive into reversals. So reversal patterns, we're going to look at four. Well, there are really two, but they're just different uh, ways of looking at them, depending if they're, at a, if they're found at the top or the bottom of movements. So the first one is the head and shoulders. Super classic, one of the most talked about patterns in the world. And then what we have the inverted head and shoulders which is the same but in reverse so a head and shoulders is this uh regular head and shoulders is found at the top of movements inverted at the bottom and then double or triple tops or bottoms so the double double uh or triple tops obviously are found in swing highs and double triple bottoms at the swing lows or bottoms of movements so a head and shoulders, one of the most recognized reversal patterns in trading seen at the top of uptrends. Price makes a new high, pulls back and then makes a higher high or what we call the head. We're coming on an uptrend. Then it pulls back and prints a lower high or right, um, or right shoulder but in this case, this is giving you pause in the trend because we're not making a higher high. So it's like it's exhausting. Then uh, as you, uh, we're gonna see the volume plays an important roles, role when it comes to analyzing chart patterns. Because um, you wanna see these patterns play out with high volumes on the breakouts. So this pattern is confirmed when the price breaks under the neckline, which is a line, it's a trend line that we make connecting the shoulder bottoms. They are not always flat, like in this case we can see that they're tilted. Once price makes a new lower low under the last swing of the, uh, that created the head right over here, then it's a confirmation that the trend is changing or the market structure is broken. We've talked about this a lot. I'm going to rephrase it again because it's important to see how we're starting to put everything together. So what's a head and shoulders? It's basically an uptrend where price is coming up. We got a high, higher low, a higher high, which is the head a higher low and then right here price should have continued on the uptrend instead what happens is we print a lower high which would be the right shoulder and now you know as soon as we see this we're we 
our antenna goes up because we know that uh, head and shoulders is potentially forming and so we draw a line connecting the points that made the head and the right shoulder right here on the pullback of the left shoulder and the pullback from the head to the right shoulder we make a line and once the pattern breaks this line this is the confirmation that we have a head and shoulders in the making and it's confirmed and usually this neckline we'll see more often than not we get a pullback into it and this is where we get the ultimate entry point some traders will go in right here when it breaks they're what we call breakout traders they're trying to go with momentum however as we've seen this they pose a risk of getting uh, um, what we call a fake out and price just reverses and they're trapped so you know usually you always want to try to go in with price I always advocate and tell all my students you always want to go in when price is coming at you like you want price to come to your order you don't want to chase price because that's usually a recipe for disaster okay and then right here as we've seen we have the last high and then right here we break market structure right here and we break this last low here so once we're broken here we know that we've definitely broken market structure to the downside and we expect a downtrend now what are this pink blocks that I have marked here well this is how classical chart pattern traders measure head and shoulders to see where they're going to take profits what they do is they put a measurement from the top of the head to the neckline and project it once we have broken the neckline and then project that so then let's say if you went in on a short here at the retest you had a very great entry and I don't know your stop was right here above the shoulder well then you would put your take profit right here which would be the same measurement as the head that is how classical chart pattern trading um, dictates to put your take profit and now here we have an example this is the German 10-year bonds that's called the Bund this is a four-hour chart we have here price we're in an uptrend high higher low so this is the left shoulder we push higher we form the head we come lower higher low and then right here this is where we see we're having some problems here because price is not pushing higher we're not making a higher high then we have the neckline here which is connecting the pullback that made the head the pullback from the left shoulder and the pullback that formed the right shoulder we connect the neckline and right in here white red price broke there let's bring out the drawing tool right here where we break this this is confirmation of the pattern and so now we would draw a measurement from the top of the head to the neckline then we take this same measurement and we put it from here well this is not going to fit on my screen but we we would project this from here from here all the way down the same length of this and that's where we would take profit on this trade the inverted head and shoulders is one of the most recognized reversal patterns in trading it is seen at the bottom of downtrends price makes a new low pulls back and makes a lower low which would be the head then pulls back and prints a higher low the right shoulder this is where it gives us pause because we're like you know 
if this downtrend is going to continue, this head, this swing low, should be broken so we can continue down. However, we just printed a higher low on the right shoulder. So this is where we're going to start scouting entries into what would be um, a reversal. So volume again displays an uh, important role in this. We Ideally, we want to see declining volumes uh, near the peaks and then we want to see high volume come on the breakouts and I'm going to show you that once we go into actual live charts um, and again this pattern is confirmed when we break the neckline so then if I bring my drawing tool um, we're in a downtrend here we have a low a lower high lower low lower high and right here we're making a higher low so this is where we're like on alert because and then here we have this line where we can put a trend line connecting what we call the neckline and once price breaks through this neckline confirms the pattern this is where a lot of breakout traders are gonna go long however like we said we want price to come back to us so once we see this breakout we can put a limit order to buy here with a stop under the shoulder and we get our entry and then again we take the measurement from the bottom of the head to the neckline we project it here and this is where we would look to take profits here we see an example of this on Australian dollar, US dollar, inverted head and shoulders, where we see price coming down. We're in a downtrend. And then let me bring this up. We're in a downtrend. Lower high, lower low, lower high, higher low, lower low, lower high low so this is we're like we're on a full-on downtrend right here this will be our left shoulder this will be our head and then what happens here we pull back into this resistance and then here we made a higher low so this is you know this is making us pause because we're like if this downtrend is going to continue this level has to go like price needs to continue down here but it's holding up here so then in this case let me clean this out just so we don't get too confused by a lot of things on the chart here we would put a neckline which actually this neckline was almost a perfect horizontal level like a resistance and we see right here huge bullish engulfing candle to the upside we actually didn't really get a retrace here we had a little retrace but not a lot but here we just break out we confirm the pattern and we can see how we had a strong reaction to the upside and we continue up now we go into the next pattern which is double and triple tops and bottoms so for this, a very popular and common pattern which helps signify a trend reversal. You will see price make a swing high or low, pull back to a level of support and resistance before making one more attempt at the last swing and it reverses and starts moving against the prevailing trend. That's what we call it a reversal pattern because it's a change in the trend triple tops and bottoms are seen more during ranging markets where price is moving sideways in a range or what we call a rectangle also which is a pattern that we're going to see uh, in a little bit ideally you want to see the last swing higher low break up over the previous one since this will indicate a better chance of reversal 
So is what we talked about when we were talking about the individual candlestick patterns of our hammers, how here we would like to see this go up a little bit more than this and come back down because we want to see those stops being activated on this last swing. But even if it's at the same level or a little below, it's still a significant pattern. So here we see this is a top. So we will find this at the top of uptrends. We're coming up. Price makes a high, pulls back. We make another run and price just stops right around that same level, meaning the sellers sold here. We come back and they just reloaded and just sold back again. This is an important change. And then we have here um, a neckline or just a support level. And then we just breach it and we break market structure. So this is an example of a triple bottom. And this is what we said. This is um, especially significant. And we see this when we're more like ranging in the market. And again, you know, depending what time frame you're trading, let's say if these are uh, daily candles, you know, this is several weeks of action. So you can still get, you know, like good trades here. You can catch a little downtrends, uptrends, etc. But if you're looking at this on a five minute or 15 minute chart, you know, this is a very short period of time. So you know, price is pretty much stuck in a range and you don't really want to be too involved because, you know, you're not getting a lot of yield and you run the risk of just getting what they call chopped up. Price just moves back and forth and it's just stopping people left and right, up and down. But you have what you call the necklines or the su resist resistance support. We make a triple attempt at this bottom level and then just reverse. So that'll be a triple bottom. Here's an example, Euro, US dollar, one hour chart. We're going in an uptrend. We have a pullback. Price just goes back right into this exact level, making a double bottom. Buyers step back in, push the tire the strong uptrend still in place and we just push up. This is um, another example on Australian dollar, US dollar, where we have a, this is almost a triple top, even though this one didn't reach this level, but let's say it's a double top and we have price come up hit this level, pull back, we just missed it, pull back exactly again at that level and just push down. And again, this is the one hour. If we would go up into like a daily chart, then we would probably, if we go into this and we just put it on a daily chart, it'll probably just look like this. It will literally look like just two steps at that level in like less detail than what we have here on the lower time frame. Okay, so that is basically what we have in terms of um, the theory for this. So now let's go to some live charts just to see some examples. Okay, hey, welcome. So now we're back with the video where we're going to go over several charts and I'm going to show you many examples of what we were discussing as the first category of classical chart patterns, which would be the reversal patterns. And like you remember, we discussed, we have, um, we talked about four patterns which I'm just going to quickly draw here. So we talked about the head and shoulders, which is the formation when we have like this, and we find it at the top of trends. Then we have the inverse head and shoulders, which we found like this at the bottom of trends. And then we have double tops, double bottoms, and then the triple tops 
or triple bottoms, which I said are usually found when we're in a ranging market environment and we just have several touches between a support and resistance. Okay, so I have some examples here that I've annotated and I wanted to show you things that don't necessarily look picture perfect because in reality, you know, that's how it's going to be in the market. You got to use a lot of intuition and just look what price action is telling you. But here we have a chart of New Zealand US dollar. And so as you can see, pretty much this is what I'm looking at here. This is the head and shoulders that I'm looking at in this case, where we have the left shoulder here, we have the head here, and the right shoulder over here. Okay, so then, like we talked about, what do we have? We have a downtrend that's coming down, and we can see we're making lower, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. So we got a nice downtrend that is intact and then right here at this point when you see this big pin bar here at a swing low you know this is as we talked about this is a single candle pattern for a possible reversal we rejected right off this zone of demand where we had some buyers in here where we broke out and we come back and retest this and reject strongly. If the downtrend was going to continue, this should have gone on and we should have broken this low and just continued down, but we didn't. We're holding here. So as soon as you see that and you identify this, that we're sort of forming a diagonal head and shoulders, then the first thing you do is you look to trace the trend line. So what do we do with the trend line? Well, we take our line tool and whatever program you use. Let me make this a little thicker. And we just, we trace a line. And again, we follow the same trend line principles. We want to look for the most confluence of touches. In this case, I'm going to put it right here, sort of in the middle where we had the most touches. But well, at the time, if you're trading this live, obviously this is a lot easier to see in hindsight, but you would probably have seen this forming around here, but you have this basic trend line to work with. And so then what do we wanna see? Well, you trace the trend, the neckline. And so you know that as soon as you break this neckline, this confirms the pattern. And now we're going to bring in, remember I talked about volumes, we're going to bring the volume indicator, which you can see it's plotted in the bottom. The red candles are where we have bearish candles and the higher they go, that means the higher amount of selling volume that we had there. And the same with the greens, our buyers, the higher the green candle, the stronger the buying was at that level. So, and well, in this case, we're using a Forex market. So again, uh, Forex markets, you know, it's a decentralized market. So these volumes are not measured exactly how they are. I'll show you, we'll see other examples with other things that actually have volume data with Forex. You get a volume estimated by the tick change, which is the units of the Forex market but it is very close to what a real volume would be. So you can still use volumes in Forex here for, you know, for confluence in your analysis. So then basically we have here, downtrend right here is where we have a little change in trend. And now all we're looking at is this highs. We're looking at the trend line, at the neckline and at this previous highs, because we know here we come up resistance and then we just break through this as soon as we break through this previous swing high we know the market structure has shifted even if it's for the short term but we know that now the downtrend has been interrupted and so in this case remember what i said you know if you caught this late for example here 
this would have been very tricky to get in like if you're waiting to see you know classically uh, the classic technical analysis books would say just go in here on the break but you know unless you're watching it intently right when this happens and you would sort of have to be chasing the market it might be a little harder to get in. I guess you could dig down into a lower time frame and just look for an entry here. In fact, let me go down to the one hour and um, let me just find this chart because now it's going to be a little trickier. But let's go back to this period and look at this same pattern. But let's look at it if it lets me okay now yeah it's not gonna show me data that far back so let's just keep looking at it here on the four hour I'll show you other examples where we we'll go down on lower time frames because as always like right here we broke and this is a four hour candle but if we dig down into the one hour maybe we broke and we had a backwards retest to get in but the point is even if you miss this whole entry and it just left without you, you know, you don't want to chase it. In this case, we will look back and wait because what do we say? Trend lines, just like horizontal support and resistance lines, once they're broken, we expect them to do the opposite when we come back. So here we had resistance, 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 we break, and now look three times used as support so you could have waited back here in here you could have had an order to buy around here we would put our stop loss right below the right shoulder here this is the the shoulders and the head and then if we go by the classic measurement of profit we could have taken a measurement here from the neckline to the tip of the head we project this from the breakout point so you see here on that first try we wouldn't have gotten in and this you know this was sort of a swing trade you would have had to have this open for many days so maybe if you know it went and it would go back you would have probably scratched this trade but if you would have held on we see that it never reached our stop here and we end up hitting the take profit right at this point okay so that's one example of how this one would play out so let's go look at another example I have here let's go into the pound dollar and we're gonna go into the one hour time frame and let's go back to September and again, you know, this pattern, you can see it everywhere. I just have these examples that I had already marked to show you because, um, you know, I didn't want to waste a lot of time on the videos trying to go over charts looking for something live where I could, like, show you something that I think would be a good example um, just to have it ready here. So let's see. We're looking for September... 2009 Let's see one hour September 2019 okay and we have it right here right at the top of this you can see we have a clear uptrend here we have price just going up in an uptrend we're making higher highs higher lows let me just move this here Okay, so we got higher highs, higher lows. We're clearly in an uptrend. And then right here, this is where we're going to pay attention. 
we have the top here. This was the left shoulder. Actually, no, we can even make it because this is technically, this is the last swing. And then we have the right shoulder forming right here, which was coming back. Okay, so now let's zoom in here just into this area. So we can see here, we got, we're coming up low, we make a head here and a higher high, we come down and then right here, this is the point where the market structure here has not been broken on this retrace because this swing low is still intact, but we're failing right here to make a push higher. So right here is where the market is telling us that this uptrend is losing steam and we also had this swing low which was broken here so this was a sign it was already weakening so then we can take a trend line and just plot a trend line here which you can see we can just plot as a horizontal level here right where this tip of this was into where we broke this swing high and we retested so in this case we have the move up the head move back down and then we know this used to be resistance broke resistance and a resistance uh visit back into resistance right here and then you can see in terms of volumes you can see we had a big buying volume here when we were forming the head. We pushed down. There's a lot less buying volume at the tip, which is an indication that the buyers are getting exhausted. And then right here, when we break the neckline, look at this increasing selling volume. We have a lot of selling volume coming in when we break this neckline. and then we just break market structure we broke it first here and we break it further here and we had a very nice retest here and let's go look at one last example of a regular head and shoulders this time let's go to a bitcoin chart you can see this applies in any markets and this is actually we're going to go look at what happened to bitcoin when we were at all-time highs this is when everyone was going crazy when bitcoin reached twenty thousand dollars back in december of 2017 and we can see here how we were coming we had a super bullish uptrend we have the swing the left shoulder we form the head we come down, we add another push up, and then we break down. So in this case, we have here, this will be, let me take this off just so it doesn't cover our image. We have, our neckline will be right there, because this was the last swing low that pushed and made the head so this is the left shoulder head and right shoulder here we came down and then right here this you see we came down we bounced here and made this swing high this was the right shoulder and then we came and broke so we stopped and didn't come but then right here on this one we clearly broke it we break the market structure, we broke the swing lows, and then you have a very nice retracement back for an entry here. And if we were gonna go short, let's say you were able to get in there, you would put your stop here. And then this is a tool that we have in trading view where it can show you how your trades risk reward ratio would be, where it shows you entry, stop, and take profit in this case. We can even apply a classic measurement.
for the target and we have it right here so we could have put our take profit right at this level and you can see how we hit take profit not long after so this is a good example how this was just a blow up top and then we lost strength and we just came back okay so that's for Bitcoin and now let's move on and let's look at some inverted head and shoulder examples let's go into the S&P 500 market we got uh, one hour let's go to May 14th and we have it right here this was a very very nice head and inverted head and shoulders that we had here price we broke the swings market structure down we're trending down here Just like that here we broke market structure we were sort of ranging in this area but we broke the range to the downside here so we're going down and then we have here left shoulder head and a right shoulder right here so then we take our tool we connect this is our neckline right there so this is the last swing that formed the head and then this is the last swing that formed the right shoulder and then in this case we see how we came up we actually rejected again here but we held and look look at this candle it's uh, a hammer candle in the middle of an uptrend when you see this this is a good sign that there's strength in the uptrend because we retraced and the buyers just bought this whole candle up and we closed very near to the head as you can see right there here okay and then here so we did not get a retrace back you could have gone in here on the breakout we can apply a measure move here a classic measure move we put it right here and we see how we hit it right there we hit our measure move right here and then in this case we would have gone long so let's say we were anticipating you know to this didn't fall and it's holding then we anticipate it to break let's say you were able to get in around here no sorry this is backwards we're gonna go on a long position here so you would have gone there stop right below the right shoulder and your take profit would have been at the measure move and you hit it right there on that candle we would have hit it so that should be how you would have played this and then you can see that was actually a really really significant low and look how we just trended for a very long time right after that so you can see head and shoulders are very good signals when you find them at the bottom of trends that there's going to be a change now let's go back to euro us dollar let's look at a 15 minute chart so you can see this applied in lower time frames let's go to uh, june 15 June 15 okay we have it here see like this is an example how this patterns don't always like look completely like you know picture perfect nice but you can see here we're coming up we have a swing low here we break and have a low here and then we have this whole consolidation that just does not fall down does not continue down and so in this case we can just connect our lines here
and you can see how here look at the volumes also how there was big buying then once we get once we make this swings the volumes go down like when we approach this the buyers are down here when we approach this again buyers are down here and then look once we break out look how high the volume of buying that came up into this candle in this case we would have probably missed this but like we've said we can just set an order to go in on a retest of this with a stop just below the right shoulder and we had a very nice reaction we can apply the measure move here right there we projected from the breakout point and right here we had our target hit right there so this was a very very nice retrace for a trade over here then the last example of inverted uh, head and shoulders I have is an Apple we're gonna look at some stocks here so Apple on the one hour let's go to March 20 fourth and we have it right here we can see in Apple again this is an example of how you know this patterns you sort of gotta see them all in context together we can see right here in this case actually this would be the last retracement can make it smaller it's actually here this was the shoulders and this was the head here all this empty spaces that you see this is because this is a stock market and these are gaps that we have over the weekend so this is from Sunday gaps that we have on weekends or when there's news overnight there might be big gaps on the openings so that's why we have empty spaces here but still you can get the overall picture here we would have plotted a trend line right here the left shoulder we're coming on a downtrend right here this was this was the swing low that would give us pause because this should have just continued and broken this down if we were going to continue the downtrend but then you see that this breaks and you could have gone in here if you're able to catch the breakout with a stop loss right here and then a measure move up here or you could have tried to catch a retrace of some sort okay so that's it for head and shoulders right here now let's go look at some double and triple top and bottoms so you can see so let's go first into the crude oil market which is a very volatile market that moves very fast we're gonna go into the daily chart we're gonna go to January I'm gonna go into January 7th and we have it right here this is a very nice by the way here we can see this is like a tweezer top right here we had also but right here we can see on the daily chart let's mark that up this is we're having a huge uptrend let me take out volume now so it's not too distracting so we have here a double top right here price makes a stab up and look what we talked about also this was we had two double tops in a row and two tweezer tops in a row tweezer top tweezer top and then on that we have a higher double top here and a double top here and we see how we break above twice and break back down and that's what I told you we have liquidity 
always around swing points there's liquidity because people tend to put their stop losses right after big significant swing points so there's a lot of liquidity here people that sold and went short here have buy stops here when price comes in here it triggers those buy stops so that means it's triggering buy market buy orders and as we know in trading for every buyer there's a seller and for every seller there's a buyer so if someone wants to go short here he wants to sell into someone's buy orders so all the buy orders are right here we prick up trigger stop losses big players load up shorts here and we close back down and then we continue so that's a very nice example and here let's mark this let's go into a hourly chart just so we can go see this how it looks right here if we go into an hourly chart that double top this is how it would look on an hourly chart we can always refine levels and go into lower time frames and the exact same behavior right here on the lower time frame double top with the second double top just piercing this one and closing back in and immediately a strong reversal so double tops and bottoms are very significant reversal patterns let's go look at a uh, crude oil we can also see on the daily chart we have another example 18 18th of May right here this was another example right here uptrend in this case we did not pass the last candle we fell just a little bit short of it but still look at this candle how bearish this is a two straight inverted hammers or shooting stars right at the top of this uptrend these are strong bearish signals and then we have at July right here again another one right here we come back up and again this one we miss again by a little bit but we collapse right after so you can see these patterns are very prevalent everywhere let's go look at uh let's look at gold let's look at some commodities here now this is silver this is gold right here let's go look at the one hour chart and again here let's see gold one hour 16th of June June okay we have right here there's actually several examples but we can see here triple top pin bars are double top if you go into a lower time frame then they would look as here pin bars pin bars and then here we have double top so again you can see this is very very prevalent if you see a trend and you're getting two levels exactly at the same or very close level and rejecting that is a very strong signal that there might be some exhaustion in that trend let's look at one last example of tops and that will be on Netflix so we can see and more examples let's go to weekly chart let's do like a very high time frame uh, chart and let's see where was it channel on Netflix
we can see right here, this is actually a triple top here on Netflix. We come back one, two, three times almost at the exact level and three times rejected. So you can see and actually this level, if we just extend it, look what a strong support resistance level this was. We rejected again here and then finally we broke out here in April. But again, this was a triple top right here before we collapsed. Now let's go look at some bottoms. Let's go into the crypto market. Let's go look at Bitcoin on the daily. And we have here, let's go to 2019. We have right here. This was on the second wave. We had a really big rally in Bitcoin on the first half of 2019. And then right here. We reversed and then look at this area. We had a, a strong demand level right here, but look at this double bottom where I think we missed it by just a little. No, actually it's perfect. Yeah, it's actually almost at the exact value here. We can even look at, you can look here at these numbers here. We can see what the, the low here was. 90.84.7 and here 91.01 so it was just a difference of like $15 between these lows it's basically a double bottom perfect and then you can see how we came double bottom and big rally afterwards okay now let's look at the bond market this is the German 10-year bonds this is a popular instrument among uh, traders in Europe and we can see right here we're coming down downtrend and we see right here oh, let me use a line so it's a little bit more precise right there let's make this thing actually so you can actually see here how first we have a big inverted hammer which is, is very bullish we touched it and if you can see we went down by like a little bit let me use the magnet just so I can make it exact see you can see there we just prick right through it and went back that's a very very bullish double bottom on this and then uh, let's see we can go into New Zealand US dollar and again I'm just you know I know you can see this everywhere we can have it right here even like here I just open my screen right into this and look what I see perfect we had a high we break market structure, we start sort of ranging here, and a perfect double top here, and then we collapse. And then let's look at a last example on S&P 500. If we go to the daily, and let's go look at right here this was a really really big double top or we see well actually it was a triple because we made three separate attempts at it so we had a nice triple top here with a lot of attempts to go through it. And then let's see right here. We can see right here, this was close to the top right before we had a big collapse. We also have 
double top right there and a big keep in mind this is the daily chart so this was these are very big moves and we had a double top right here okay so then will that uh, will do oh let me show you just to finish an example where we're saying about triple tops and bottoms it's more like when we're sort of in a ranging environment so like when you have um, let's see we can put dollar and Swiss franc which this is a this is a market that finds itself sort of ranging a lot so you can see here yeah when you have behavior like this where the market is sort of stuck inside of uh, a range then you're gonna have a lot of examples where you're just having a lot of touches of the same level and you get three or more there's where you, this is where you get like a lot of triple tops and bottoms and thing in that sense just when you see and you know they're present in like any market you can even put like in Bitcoin Bitcoin likes let's go into a one hour chart Bitcoins likes to do uh, a lot of uh, triple or more tops and bottoms too because we find it like likes to range a lot like for example here we have right here we oh, get this precise let's turn off the magnet and let's make this thicker just right here like you can see we had four hits on this resistance so four tops until we broke and then it was a strong move to the upside in this case well this is like a, a resistance level in this case so in reality we don't count this because we're talking about reversal patterns so we're just gonna apply it into this part of the movement where we see triple top and we reverse and continue going down okay so anyway that's it for this video of examples and in the next section we're going to continue going on with what would be continuation patterns okay so i'll see you in the next video